Okay, this problem has to do with the elastic mechanical properties and the relationships between these properties in an isotropic solid. Okay, the problem states that a rod of metal has initial dimensions, length 3 meters, diameter 2 centimeters. We're told that the rod is pulled in tension axially, so that's along the length of the rod, with a stress of 75 megapascals. And then we're told what the new dimensions are after it's deformed. It's now 3.15 meters long, but the diameter is reduced to 1.97 centimeters. Then it says, assuming an isotropic solid, what shear stress would be required to produce a shear strain of 2% in a different block made of the same metal? Okay, so since we're ultimately trying to get to shear stress, and we start out with dimensions and a stress, we need to map out the sort of calculations we're going to need to do in order to get there. So to end up at shear stress, we know to get um, shear stress, and we're given a shear strain, we're going to need shear modulus at some point, and we're going to use shear strain to get to the shear stress. So how do we get to modulus? Well, to get modulus, we're initially given uh, dimensions and a stress. So that stress is going to give us Young's modulus, right? And so if you have Young's modulus and you have an isotropic material, in order to get the shear modulus, we know that we're going to need the Poisson's ratio, right? Those two things together is going to get us to the shear modulus. So how do we get Young's modulus? Well, we started out with stress um, and our dimensions, right? We had Li and we had Di. So we're going to take L final and D final, and we're going to turn that into strain, which can give us that. Strain can also give us Poisson's ratio if we know the strain in the longitudinal and transverse directions. So that's sort of the approach in this problem. Now that we know that, we can just dive in and start calculating these things. So maybe the first thing to do is to determine what is the strain in the axial direction. That's in the longitudinal direction, right? So we can say that we know that stress equals strain times modulus. And we know that strain is equal to L final minus L initial divided by L initial, right? So we can go ahead and plug things in. This is 3.15 meters minus 3 meters divided by 3 meters. I left out the meters because they're going to cancel. So that is just 0 0.05. That's what we're going to call sigma y. That's our longitudinal strain, right? That's in the y direction. That's how I'm defining that. And we could do in the x direction as well, right? The transverse direction. In the x direction, that's in the direction of the diameter, so the radial direction. We could say that's the final diameter minus the initial diameter divided by the initial diameter, right? So this will be 1.97 minus 2 divided by 2, which gives us a transverse strain of negative 0 0.15, 0 0.015, right? So now we have our strain in our x and y directions. Um, because we have strain in the y direction, and we know stress in the y direction, we can figure out Young's modulus. We know that Young's modulus is equal to stress over strain, or in this case, it's equal to 75 megapascals divided by the strain in the y direction, which is 0 0.05, which means that our total uh, Young's modulus for this material is 1500 megapascals, right? So now that we have modulus, we're almost able to get the shear modulus, but we need to get the, the Poisson's ratio first. Poisson's ratio is defined as the negative transverse strain divided by the longitudinal strain. We've already calculated those. That's negative of negative 0 0.015 divided by positive 0 0.05. That means that our Poisson's ratio comes out to 0 0.3 in this case. So now that we have Poisson's ratio and Young's modulus, we can calculate shear modulus. Now this only works for an isotropic uh, solid. If it's not isotropic, there's a different relationship we're gonna have to use. But this is a simple scenario here. We know that if you had Young's modulus, that it would be equal to two times the shear modulus multiplied by one plus the quantity of our Poisson's ratio, right? So we can go ahead and solve for shear modulus here. This means that shear modulus is simply going to be equal to the Young's modulus divided by two times the quantity of one plus our Poisson's ratio. So when we go ahead and plug in values for that, we find that this is equal to, let's give ourselves some room, 
that's equal to 1500 megapascals divided by 2 plus 1.3 which comes out to 576 megapascals 576.9 megapascals that's our shear modulus G so now we're almost there we know that the total shear strain was 2% that was equal to our shear strain or we could write that as 0 0.02 and we know that the shear stress is equal to the shear strain times the shear modulus so we are almost there 576.9 megapascals multiplied by 0 0.02 as our shear strain will tell us exactly what shear stress it takes and when I punch those into my calculator I get 11.5 uh, megapascals as the shear stress it takes to achieve that shear strain.